but we've reimagined it. So when we decided we wanted to tackle the Zeus, we had to consider what direction RSI would take it in if they were going to do it today. We couldn't just remake the original Zeus because although it was obviously a massive piece of history, all it was really used for was transporting and moving around. So we had to consider exactly what we wanted to do with the ship. In the end, we decided to go for three variants, allowing you to pick which way you want to actually play the game. So what we're going to do is talk about those variants that we decided on in the end and go into a bit more detail with them. First of all, we have the ES. The ES is the essential. It's the long-range exploration version of the Zeus. It's designed to let you go out for a long time and explore the universe. Next up, we have the Mark. The Mark is the bounty hunter version. This is there for you so you can actually go out, find your targets, and bring them back. It's also been purposely outfitted so that you have all the tools that you need to disable, capture, and bring them home. Finally, the last version we're going to talk about is the CL, the Clipper. Might be a name people are familiar with if they know much about Maritime. This is the cargo version of the Zeus Mark II. This is designed so that you can move your goods around the universe. Of the three variants, the Zeus Essential is the one that harkens back the most to the original design with the original white on black paint job and the vertical stabilizers. We also worked to maintain the silhouette of the original but brought that forward to modern day RSI design with tons of technical detail and layered panels. And on the underside, the landing gear and the underslung turret, as well as the entrance, ent entrance ladder, fold in perfectly flush, leaving behind a super smooth underbelly, just like the original design. Oh, you probably all want to see what the inside looks like. So let's have a closer look. Despite the sleek and slim body of the Zeus, we've been able to pack a lot into it to give everything you need when you're doing the deep space exploration. You have a fairly comfortable habitation recreation area so that when you're out away from home, it's not too unpleasant. In addition to that, the rear room has a 32 SU cargo capacity, as well as being able to fit a cyclone, so if you do decide to land on a planet, you can have a look around. Talking about the loadout, it's a ship designed for three crew. It comes with four size two shield generators, two size two power plants, two size two coolers, and two size four pilot controlled weapons. And obviously the lower turret that Elwa mentioned earlier is a size three remote turret. Now the Zeus Mark was always designed from the beginning to be a sleek and aggressive bounty hunter. As such, the black paint will help you stay hidden in the shadows until you're ready to strike. We've also redesigned the spine in order to embed an EMP and a quantum dampener, which allows us on the art side to really crank up the level of detail on the exterior. We've also added a second remote turret on the top. Looking at the interior of the Mark, you see that the habitation's taken a little bit of a hit. It moved forward, but what we've been able to add in exchange for that is a massive armory, lets you take all the different weapons and equipment you might need while you're tracking your target along the verse. Looking into the rear, we actually have a dedicated area just for the actual um, bounty hunter pods, similar to what you'll see in the Cutlass Blue, so you can stack up the pods and take multiple people back with you. It has less SU than the ES, it only has 16 SU, and it does have a different loadout with the components, only having three size two shield generators. Like Ellen said, it does have a top mounted forward facing turret so that you can put the pressure on the target as you're chasing them. The EMP and QD drive are designed to stop the target escaping once you've caught up with them. Now, because the Zeus Clipper focuses on hauling cargo, we've decided to lean into the industrial aesthetic. We've covered the exterior with a warning strip paint job, uh, and we've covered the exterior with more technical detail and armor plating. In addition to that, it comes with a remote tractor beam, which is mounted on the rear to the side of the ramp to make it easier to haul cargo in and out of the cargo hold. We've also added thrust capacity to the base of the wings. As you can see, there is an absolutely massive rear to it compared to the others. The habitation areas have been massively pushed so that you don't get much space, but we can get way more cargo in. It actually has four times the cargo capacity of the S coming in at 128 SUs of cargo. 
This one also features three size 2 shield generators, and like Owl mentioned, it has a size 3 tractor beam to make it much easier to get those cargo containers in and out as you're actually playing. What do you think? <laughs> so, last year we introduced the Spirit. And if anyone that may be playing on their live, couple, live the last couple of days might have seen a new ship added to the verse, the A1. We hope to follow a similar route with the Zeus where we announce it today and then in about a year's time, ready to reveal to the public to actually play with. But this isn't just a concept. We're not just going to show you some images. The Zeus is actually in active white, do white box development right now. Do you just want to have a look? Yeah! Shall we? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as you guys have seen with the Spirit and with the many ships we've released thus far, our ships can, when they're finished, look absolutely gorgeous. But before any of them get to that point, they have to grow through a very specific development process. And this is the first stage in that process. We call this white box. At this point, we've taken the concept, ripped it to shreds, and then reassembled it and plugged it all back together within the editor so that we can get a real good look at what players are going to see when they finally get this game. At this stage, with the Zeus, we've already ripped out all the thrusters, we've ripped out the landing gear, the turret, the seats, the beds, all of the interior spaces, plugged those guys back in, and we have what you see here. So again, the beginning of the process. At this point, we're able to jump in, start throwing in cargo, interacting with doors, getting in and out of beds, maybe in and out of toilets, and just getting an overall sense of what it feels like to interact with the vehicle. And it is very common that in this stage, we will make some adjustments from the original plan. As an example, on this ship, We've just made the decision to expand the center corridor, add a little bit more space to the rooms. And as a result, that's going to make it much smoother experience for players to traverse the, inter the interior of the ship, as well as for AI to traverse the interior of the ship. We've also expanded the main airlock that leads to the enter exit ladder. And up here in the cockpit, we've separated the co-pilot seats a tad bit just to allow players to get in and out a little easier. So with white box, not the prettiest stage in the process, but it is essential that we nail this because it means we'll be able to deliver a beautiful ship that is also extremely fun to play. So that was the RSI Zeus, the three variants. Obviously, as the screen says behind me, it's available now. On the Star Citizen website, you all follow that URL or the QR code behind me. Now, we've just talked about the ship with the longest legacy in the universe. It, it was the first ship with the quantum travel. Let's change pace a little bit and talk about a much newer ship. We're going to talk about 